magnetomotive force. We can call that MMF. We sometimes shorten it to MMF. We sometimes call it FM, but magnetomotive force, we can call it whatever we want if we know it, the concept really well, right? Uh, magnetomotive force is, um, it's the force. And if we go way back and we look at the electrons going traveling in an infinite um, length um, and negligible cross-section uh, current carrying conductors, two of them in the same direction, they have a magnetic attraction to each other. And that magnetic attraction is the definition of an amp. Um, because that magnetic attraction is measured in force. So if we think back to that force, well, that force actually came from, um, from the electron flow. So we're relating, again, um, this, this force that is very real. We know magnetism is real. We know that um, two, two little toy trains with magnets on each side are going to come towards each other. We know that um, there's a magnetic force in all of our electric machines. Um, but we this is one step towards uh, relating that physical force that we cannot see uh, to, um, to, to the magnetism or the, the, the electric force, sorry, to the electric uh, force that is so useful to us in machines. So let's talk about magnetomotive force. Uh, I like calling it FM, um, but it's also MMF and it doesn't matter what we call it. It is, it's, it's, Base SI unit is the amp. That is our SI unit. But sometimes, sometimes we add some units to base SI units. We can also say that it is it measured in amps times turns. And just we'll just be careful here. Technically, not a unit, but it is useful. So it's just like in moles. Moles do not have a unit. Moles are a count of, of usually electrons, protons, etc. It's just a count. It's just a number. So if I say moles, I wouldn't put the unit moles beside it, but but we do usually because it's handy to say mole because, um, you know, how else do we really keep track of that without saying it? But it's not an SI unit. If we have a dozen eggs, we say 12 eggs. We don't say 12 dozen because dozen isn't really a unit it's just a count so in this case we are counting counting um, these turns this is a count not a unit but i like bringing t around for the ride i like saying amp turns i like bringing t along for the ride knowing it's not an si unit it just keeps me uh, remembering that I have a count of number of turns there. Now, I haven't talked about what um, the turns are. Um, it is the turns in an electromagnet. So our electromagnet is created by turn a turning a current coil conductor, which is a wire. I turn these wires into coils and coils are very often used in a lot of useful electric machines. When I turn a, um, a, a coil or sorry, a wire into a coil and I put a current through it and this current has a direction, um, then I induce a magnetic field. So we know this now, we know this by now is that we induce a magnetic field. And if we don't know this by now, then we have some videos to catch up on. But we induce this magnetic field, it has direction, and we it's literally made up of a bunch of lines of flux that have interesting properties with, with respect to each other. And it's an invisible force. It's the force that is invisible. It actually does work. In this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six coils I have counted here, or six turns. I have counted six turns of coil in this demonstration. And um, M MMF is looking at, is it's a direct result of the current that I put through this electromagnet um, based on like with reference to the amount of current that went through each of these coils. So this is not a force that can be measured in Newtons. This is a force that is related to a rate. 
it is a direct result of the movement of current and current is the movement of current is rate of charge which is actually measured in coulombs so it is a direct result of the rate of change of charges of electrons and what they do to make a magnetic field uh, it is not measured in newtons but it is in fact a force if it does work if that force can do something then it can do work so this force can be used to do work or in other words this force can be used and this force can be used as an energy um it's it is based off the current of a single turn but i drew multiple turns here so let's look at just a single turn so in order to calculate the entire mmf we need to multiply that single turn by the number of turns in the circuit the definition or the formula for mmf the formula for magnetic motive force is the number of turns um of uh of coils times the amps in each one the number of well the amps are the same everywhere in every coil so the number this is um this is a current is equal to i um in amps so now we're going way back to amps and we are saying um the magnetic motive force fm or mmf whatever we want to call it is six turns number of turns times the current that sits in those turns measured in ampere which we have defined before in another video equals uh so that's equals n times i base unit amps i like to also say times t for turns so in this case um t equals six turns t equals six turns not actually a unit therefore therefore f m i like to put a, a vector across or a yeah vector across uh f because it does have a direction um f m is is actually measured in amps but you can measure it in amp terms let's look at what this magnetic motive force actually looks like and this is what we would call in general a magnetic circuit this is what we would call a magnetic circuit our magnetic circuit has these magnetic lines of flux, which happen to be the color I want them to be. And these magnetic lines of flux are induced in this circuit. They are induced in this circuit. These are my flux lines. They're sitting comfortably inside that circuit because this is actually ferromagnetic material. I'm just gonna redo, I'm gonna take away my own flux lines, but we see those flux lines in there. And uh, these are my coils. These are actually my coils that I usually draw really messy like this. So I'll erase those too, because this is much better than me from this Pearson textbook. Uh, but what we what we can kind of conclude over here is that I have this this um, this uh, 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 magnetic magnetomotive force over here, or I can call it MMF for magnetomotive force. And it's called it's I can calculate that as my current times my um, number of turns. So I just need to know how many turns are there? How many turns? And then I can plug in the number of turns. I need to know what is this current? And then I can plug that in in amps. And then I have my magnetic mode of force. And uh, the turns are usually um, um, uh, sometimes called N, capital N, for the count of the number of turns. and. Um, this magnetic motive force is the force that will induce the flux. This is the force that will induce the, for the flux. Induces flux to happen in that ferromagnetic material. 
And then from there, those flux lines say, oh, I love to be in this material. Oh, I don't want to come out of this material. And look, I have this circuit um, of a whole bunch of uh, cool stuff happening over here. How can I use it? So this is no longer a piece of metal sitting on my desk. This is a very useful piece of metal with some invisible forces in it. How cool is that? It's very useful. How did I make that useful thing? All I did is grab a wire, put some current through it, and I made this useful thing, which we will get to uh, how it is so useful. Um, let's just be careful of the direction here. So I'm just going to put a little warning on this picture. Warning. This picture. Which I just said, oh, thank you, Pearson. You're drawing it so much nicer than me. Um, is not conventional current flow. So uh, this illustrates the concept very well. Um, but but just kind of ignore the directions of current and um, magnetic flux here. So uh, really, we would have them in the other direction for current um, for conventional current flow. Uh, but uh, what this looks like is this is an analogy to Ohm's law. So we have induced. or created or um, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, made something happen. We have induced. What we induced is flux. What we induced is flux. If we hadn't induced it, or if we now turn the current down, this these flux lines are going to collapse. If we turn the current back up, there's more of them are going to grow. And they don't turn off and on like uh, just like a light. They 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 grow and they collapse. They grow and they collapse. Now the the rate at which they grow and collapse depends on the magnetic material reluctance. Reluctance. Let's look at this English word reluctance. Reluctance. It's kind of angry. It's kind of reluctant to cooperate. It's kind of like it resists things. It is reluctance to the establishment of flux lines. I can grab a different material that's happier. If that's called more permeable. But I can grab a different material that's happier. But this magnetic motive force that's going to be developed in here is going to is going to induce all of these nice magnetic field lines that are going to be so useful to us but they are their ability to create themselves are going to be um uh hindered by the reluctance of the material because it's going to cause it to um uh, to 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 not establish as much flux as if it were more welcoming or in in this case more permeable. This should remind us something. So this is magnetic circuit. It is not exactly the same thing, but it is actually analogous. to um, V equals I R. This is Ohm's law. This is electric circuit. So it's the same sort of thing. Voltage induces a current, but it's, it's slowed down by resistance. Magnetomotive force induces flux, but it's slowed down by reluctance. Let's say that again. Volt, oops, voltage induces current that is slowed down by resistance in Ohm's law electric circuit. In a similar way that magnetic motive force induces 
magnetic lines of flux to flow through a material that is somewhat slowed down by the reluctance of that material. So that's how we can see the analogy between electric, um, electric circuits and our magnetic circuits. And thinking about it that way is simply useful uh, when we're trying to do some calculations as we're learning this material.